welcome to part 3 of creating a jQuery slider. Now this tutorial was actually a request and it covers part 3 and part 4. And in these two parts what we're going to do is we're going to create this slider and we're going to make it more dynamic. And by more dynamic we mean we're going to create a file uploader where you can actually upload images and then PHP is going to collect these images from the folder we upload to and display them into the slider. So we don't actually need to add in the images automatically like manually and then manually put in the code for them, uh, PHP would do it all for us with just one simple upload. So let's jump into this tutorial. Okay, so there's a couple things you need to note before starting this tutorial. And that's the first thing is we're using XAMPP, which basically creates my computer so I can run PHP files on, from my local host. And I've gone over what that is and installing it in part two of the Learn PHP series. I'll leave the link in the description if you don't know. But if you've already got it set up and installed onto your computer, then let's carry on with this tutorial. So you can see within the HD docs, I've created a new folder called Dynamic Image Slider, which has one folder named Uploads and one file named index.php. Now within this folder, Uploads, it just contains three images. Now you can see that I've used these images as thumbnails on my previous videos, but I'm just using this as an example. Now, if we go back and we look at index.php, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it in Dreamweaver, which by the way, you can use any text editor. Once again, we're just using Dreamweaver. You can see that basically all of this is just the same HTML, JavaScript and styling as the jQuery slider tutorial. So you can see the JavaScript is the same. And also that the style is the same. So once we know this is the same, we're going to view it online, and you can see that what it does is exactly the same, the animations are the same, and it just slides through the images accordingly to what they are in order to by the ID of the image, just like we went over in the jQuery tutorial. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a form so that we can upload images to make this a dynamic image slider. So what we're going to do is we're just going to comment out a HTML comment saying we're starting the form. Now how we start a form is we just put the opening form tag and closing form tag below that. Once we've opened the form tag we can put attributes in here such as the action attribute which is what the form will be submitted to and we're just going to submit it to this page which is index.php. Now the next attribute is method which is the method on which we want to get the data basically and we're going to choose the method of post. After this, because we're uploading images, what we need to do is we need to have the attribute of encrypt type. And this should be equal to multipart forward slash form data. Now, within this form, we need two inputs. And the first input is going to have a type of file. And what this would do is it will basically just create one of them buttons which says browse for files, as you see almost everywhere and it will allow you to browse for a file. Now we're just going to give this a name of image uploader and or image upload even and that name comes very important to us later on in this tutorial. So the text after that is just basically telling the user what to do, it's not necessary and then we're just going to apply a couple break tags after that and then after that we're just going to create a new input with the type of submit which will automatically submit this form to the action which is this page. So it's going to automatically submit the data to this page. Now the value is just the text within the button so I'm just going to call it upload. Now once that's done and we've got our form what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a HR which is a horizontal rule to break the slider up from the form so we can see what we're doing better. So let's view what we have. So you can see that we have a basic upload form and if we click the choose file button you can see that it allows us to select from loads of images or whatever and we can also have the upload button but if we click it it does nothing so let's make that nothing something and go back into Dreamweaver and we're going to go right to the top of the document and we're going to open the PHP tag and close the PHP tag now this is where we're going to make sure that something is first sent to the PHP and then second we're going to handle that data upload the file and yeah so basically, what we're going to do is we're going to use the if is set function. Now again, I went over this in the Learn PHP series, and you can go and watch that. I'll leave the link in the description. Now, what we're checking if is set is the super global of the files. And once again, I made a tutorial on that, and I'll leave that in the description. 
Now, how you collect the data from the files is you just use the open square bracket, single quotation mark, and then the name of the input which you want to collect. So ours is image upload. And then we're going to close the single quotation mark and close the square bracket, close off the two brackets. Right, so we, you can see that this is exactly the same. You don't need to worry about that. So now we're going to open the curly brace, go down a few lines and close that curly brace off. Now anything inside these opening and closing curly braces is what we're going to run if that file is sent to us. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create first a comment saying if the form has been submit submitted just to let us know. Then we're going to create three variables. Now the first variable is going to be called image name and the second is going to be called image temp and that's because PHP calls it a temporary name whilst we're choosing what to call it basically. And the last one is image type. Now the image name is going to be just equal to the name of the actual file. So how we collect that is once again we use the super global of, var of files even and then we select the file so image upload and then once again we do our square brackets and single quotation marks to select the name and we're going to close that off and for temp we basically do exactly the same but instead of selecting the name we're just going to put temp file in here and or temp underscore name tmp standing for temp um, and that will collect the temporary name which php gives it Alright, so after that we need to collect the image type. So how we do that, once again, is exactly the same. But instead of name or temp name, what we're going to do is we're just going to type type. And it's as simple as that. Now, let's go ahead and look at my files. Because there's something that you need to see. So if we look in uploads, you can see that all of the images don't have any characters you don't want or anything like that but not every image will for example if we choose a file you can see that there's spaces in here and there's a middle score up there and basically what we need to do is we need to learn how to filter that out so we're going to be filtering the image name here and how we're going to do this is we just type in the variable of image name and it's going to be equal to a preg replace function now this function takes three arguments and the first two arguments are wrapped in double quotation marks and the last one isn't. Now on the first argument is what you want, uh, so like the string that which we're looking for to replace. So we put two pound symbols and then two square brackets. In here we're going to put the things which we're looking for, so a through to z and zero through to nine and then we're just going to put a period there because we also want to check for after the extension and in this extension. Now you can see that if we put a upwards arrow up here which is found above the 6, that's going to look for items which are not equal to that. Now if we put i in here, you can see that it auto, check, it auto checks for uppercase and lowercase. And here is what we're going to be equaling the whatever's not that to replace with, which is nothing. And then the last variable is just going to be the image name variable, which is equal to our image name upload. Okay, so that was pretty long-winded, I hope you understand, but if not, I'll be going over that in the PHP tutorials pretty soon. Now we're going to do some error handling. So what we're going to do is we're just going to check, and we're going to check if that if this image name is n equal to nothing, that's why the exclamation mark is there. So if that's equal to nothing, then we're just going to echo out a message saying you need to select an image before you upload. Okay, so once that's done, we're just going to do an else condition so that if that image is included into this document, then what we're going to do is we're going to do a PHP function named move underscore uploaded underscore file. Now you can see that it's highlighted blue saying it's a function, and within the brackets of this, you're just going to put where the directory of you want to upload that file to and the name. So we're going to put the image temp which is the temporary file which PHP gives it and then comma and now in the double quotation mark we're just going to do uploads which is the uploads folder and then image name which is the name which we want to include it which name which we want to call it sorry and it's also going to include the file extension within that so if I delete these files here 
and then go back to the work the um, document even you can see that this slider won't work as the slide as the images are no longer there but if we choose a file and we just choose any one let's pick the xamp one and click upload you can see that if we open this then that has automatically been done and there's no space there so it's been filtered so that's our upload out the way okay so that's the end of part three where we went over how to create a dynamic image upload to our jquery slider and in part four what we're going to do is we're going to go over the php functionality to collect images from that folder and then display them in our jquery slider so stay tuned for part four and i hope you enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel thank you and goodbye